Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Ebony. I'm a human design reader and coach, and today we're going to be talking about reflectors, alignment for reflectors. So, if you are a reflector, please stay tuned. Or if you would like to learn about reflectors, reflectors, please stay tuned. If you would like to work with me, if you would like a reading or a single coaching session, please check the link in the description box. That is my website. It has all the information there. And let's go ahead and get started. I have notes. So I'm looking down, so I'm looking at my notes. So, reflectors are the rarest energy type. They are 1% of the population. And this is very important to understand because they are extremely, extremely, extremely powerful and extremely necessary for our society at large because they are the cosmic mirrors, if you will. If you are a reflector, it means that you have no energy centers defined in your chart. You are completely undefined and this causes you to experience life very, very deeply. <clears throat> you are constantly taking in information, you are constantly taking in energy from other people because you don't have those centers where you push out energy. You may have to find gates. You, well, everyone has to find gates. You do have to find gates, but your centers are completely open, which means you're taking it all in. You are literally sucking in everything that you experience from the people around you, from the, from the planetary transits. So it's very important for you to understand that you are very sensitive to the things around you. You're very sensitive to your environment, which is why your environment and the people that you keep around you are so important. <clears throat> Because you have completely undefined centers, none of your centers are defined, you hold so much potential, right? Because our undefined centers are where we learn. Our undefined centers are where we experiment, where we kind of mix and match and figure out what works best for us. Because everything in your chart is open, you have almost unlimited potential. You get to try out everything. You get to experiment with everything. You get to try everything out and you get to release it at the end of the day and then do it all again the next day because none of that is yours. You don't have to hold on to any of that. <sighs> because you are undefined, you literally reflect back whatever you are experiencing in your environment. So say that you are around, you know, a generator or a manifesting generator, you are going to be taking in, amplifying and reflecting their sacral energy. So when you're around a manifesting generator, you might feel like you have all of this energy. You might feel like you can take on the world and you're reflecting that back to them. At the same time, if they are not in alignment, you may be taking on their sacral energy, but you may also be taking on that frustration that they're feeling or that anger that they're feeling because you are literally reflecting what is in your environment. And that is the purpose of reflectors. They show us what we are doing right and what we are doing wrong. If you are around a reflector, they are going to show you exactly what is going on in your energetic field right now. And this enables them to give advice and give guidance in order to get the people around them back on track. Because they can see where you're out of alignment because they can feel it, because they've taken it in, they've amplified it and reflected it back out to you. So they know what's going on. And when they tell you, hey, you know, I'm feeling your frustration, I'm feeling your anger, maybe try doing this, this, and this. When reflectors say things like that, assuming they're in alignment, when reflectors say things like that to you, it's because they see and they understand what's going on and they're trying to help you. Reflectors and projectors have this ability to see things and see people very clearly. The difference between projectors and reflectors is that projectors are here to guide, to take your hand and bring you step by step through the process. Reflectors are here to show. Like, I'm going to show you what's going on. I'm going to give you some advice. Take it or leave it, essentially, right? Um, doing wrong, doing right, this. Okay, so... That is what a reflector is. That is what you do. You reflect 
you amp you take in amplify and reflect what's going on in your environment you show us what we are doing right and what we are doing wrong you basically get us back into alignment yeah which is why reflectors are so important also reflectors are very unbiased because you are so unde because you're defined undefined everywhere you are able to see things exactly as they are you're not you know clouded by any um strong you know points of view or any strong perspectives you literally just see things exactly as they are it makes you very unbiased which is why reflectors make very good judges they make very good therapists they make very good counselors any profession where you need to see things how they are for exactly what they are reflectors are very very good at now what we need to understand about reflectors specifically is that they're very intuitive and they live in this predictive state right because reflectors don't just see the physical world they are constantly taking in and experiencing the energetic realm as well they have this kind of foresight they can look at something in the physical world and see and know exactly what is going to happen should this thing continue in the way that it's going that is one of the biggest superpowers of reflectors is that they can look at a situation and know how it's going to end. And this allows them to guide people even more intensively because they can, they can say, if you keep doing this in this way, this is going to happen. If you want that to happen, cool. If not, you might want to switch course. That is the power of the reflector. You can look at what's happening right now and know how it's going to end. This is why reflectors need to be the center of the community because they see things. They can see the shifts and feet feel the shifts of the collective and they can be like hey we're kind of off track here okay I can see this I feel where this is going it's time for us to change course that is what reflectors do they can tell us what's going to happen and the result that we are going to experience if we continue on in the way that we are going and when you have a community that is centered around reflectors, you have that foresight at all times. You are constantly, it's, it's like, um, what's, what's the thing called? The thing that keeps you on track, it's like a calibration. Reflectors are like a constant calibration because they'd be like, oh, 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 we're getting off track. Oh, we're a little bit, a little bit to the left. Let's, let's get back on track. They can do that. Yeah. Um, blah, 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 blah. oh, another thing that's very important for reflectors is grounding yourself and clearing your energy. I mentioned this a little bit before. Because you are so undefined and you're constantly taking things in, it can be really difficult. You can get very weighed down by everyone else's crap. So I would say daily, you need to be making sure that you are doing some kind of energy clearing, doing some kind of emotional clearing, um, some uh, energetic cleansing, grounding yourself, being very connected to nature and spending time by yourself. You need alone time. Projectors need alone time and so do reflectors. You have to have that time to yourself to kind of recalibrate back into your own energy. Because contrary to popular belief, Reflectors do, in fact, have their own energy field. Just because your centers are undefined does not mean that you don't give off some energy because you do have those defined gates. That's where you're supposed to kind of do the things. When it comes to your centers, you can relax a little bit, but with your defined gates, that's really what you want to focus on as a reflector is those gates where you are defined because those are your specific traits, your specific talents, your specific energetic signature is going to come from your gates. So if you are a reflector, please play, <laughs> please pay very, very, very close attention to your defined gates. That is very important. Um, okay. So let's talk about application. And I've mentioned this in a few other videos, but we're gonna go over it again here. The lunar cycle, if you are a reflector, 
it is so, 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 so important for you to pay attention to what the moon is doing. Honestly, if you can, I would say pay attention to both the sun and the moon transits. Like the, the gates, let's, let's, let, no, let's really talk about this. The daily transits. I mean the gate, the, the gates that these, that the moon is in on any given day. You can also track the sun, but specifically the moon because reflectors are lunar beings. Now let's talk about that for a little bit because my coach has a very beautiful way of putting it. Reflectors are lunar beings. And what that means is, you know, the sun is constantly burning. The sun is constantly giving off a very consistent, very specific amount of energy every single day. <clears throat> and that doesn't really change. It's very consistent from day to day. However, the moon does not generate any light of its own. The moon reflects the light from the sun. This is why reflectors are considered lunar beings because you don't give off that consistent burning energy like the sun does. The sun being defined centers. You are the moon. You are reflecting the light from everyone else's defined centers. You're also reflecting the energy from the moon. So whatever gate that the moon is in on a given day, you need to know that information and you need to know how you are being affected by it, right? Because if you have a defined gate and the moon is in a gate that in your chart is undefined, but then it creates a channel, now you've got energy that you didn't have access to before. But you don't know that if you are not paying attention to the lunar transits. So your authority and your strategy is to wait a lunar cycle. That means day after day after day after day, you are paying attention to what gate the moon is in. You're making a note of it somewhere in a journal, in your phone, and whatever. And you are then documenting how you feel on that day. How clear do you feel today? What is your energy like on this day and as you do this as you build up this wealth of, of data and information you will start to notice a pattern like some reflectors let's say during the new moon you find that you have more energy you have more clarity on things during the full moon you stay you tend to you know you tend to take a dip in energy, but mentally you feel more you feel more motivated to do things. When the uh, when the moon is in you know gate twelve, you feel like you really have more access to that energy, even though that gate is already defined. Whatever it is, if you are a reflector, you need to be tracking the lunar transits. You need to know what gate the moon is in, what um uh. What lunar phase it's in, is it waxing, is it crescent, is it new, is it full? And you need to be documenting how you feel on those days. Because waiting a lunar cycle means waiting up to 28 to, well, 28 to 30 for like a month, but 28 days for the lunar cycle. You need to be waiting up to 28 days before you make a big decision. Sometimes you can get away with not waiting the whole 28 days. If we're talking about like a small decision, like what do you have for breakfast? You obviously don't have to wait 28 days, but for a big decision, give yourself the full 28 days and really commit to tracking the lunar transits and really commit to understanding and figuring out how you feel on every given day so you can look back and be like, okay, on this day, I feel like I had the most clarity on this day. I didn't feel like I had it at all. So you can say, okay, usually around this time of the month, I know is when I make the most clear and aligned decisions for me. But you will not know that if you don't do the work, if you don't track it, if you don't document it, you will not know. It is, it's, I cannot express how important this is. If you don't take anything else away from this video and you are a reflector, please, please, Please track the lunar transits. Document how you feel. Document how clear you are. Document your energy. All of it. That is your strategy and it is your authority. 
the same, you are the only energy type that has the same strategy and authority because it's that important. On the same vein, give yourself the full 28 days. Do not let people rush you into making a decision. No, just, <laughs> just no, okay? Give yourself the full 28 days. Okay, Ooh, did I miss anything? Sun and moon, oh, 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 oh. yeah. So let's talk about your non-self themes. Well, your non-self thing, which is disappointment. If you are feeling disappointed, it's because you see something coming, right? You, you're, you're, you're feeling the shifts in the collective. You see something coming and you're trying to tell people that it's coming and no one's listening to you. So you're now you're going to try and force them to change. You're like, I see us falling off a cliff. So you know what? I'm going to make y'all turn and they're not listening to you. That's going to make you feel disappointed. Um, if you overcommit yourself, because again, you are not an energy being. You do not have a defined sacral center. You don't have any defined motor centers. So if you overcommit yourself, if you overcommit your energy, you're going to feel disappointed in yourself when you realize that you actually don't have the energy to do all the shit that you thought you wanted to do. Also a source of disappointment for reflectors is if you see something coming and you feel like there's no point in telling anyone because no one's going to listen to you anyway. Like you're anticipating them not listening to you. So you're just like, I'm just going to fucking keep it to myself. These are all things that can cause you disappointment. So what I want you to do is understand. You see things and your job is to reflect it, but it is not your job to make anything happen. It's not your job to make people listen to you. It's not your job to force things to happen. It's not. Your job is simply to be, to take in, to amplify, and to reflect everything that you are experiencing. Let us know when a shift is coming. Let us know when something's about to happen. We can listen or we cannot, but that, whether or not we take your advice, has no bearing on you, has no reflection on you or your worth or your value. So what you want to be is in this state of surprise. That is your signature theme is surprise. And this happens when you tell people that something is going to happen and they take your advice and they listen and you come back and you're like, oh my God, you guys are doing so much better. See, that's, it. that's all you had to do is just one little tweak and now look at you. That is the feeling that you want. So in order to get to that feeling of surprise, I really want you to focus on anticipating good things happening. I want you to focus on the anticipation of people taking your advice. I want you to focus on the anticipation of everything working out because people listen to you. For you to cultivate that energy, you have to kind of live in this anticipation that good things are going to happen. Because with all the things that you see and all the things that you feel, especially now in, in the time that we're living in, you have to cultivate that anticipation in yourself. Because if you don't, it will destroy you. Feeling all the shifts that are happening, reflecting back everyone's energy, and weighing yourself down with your own feelings of disappointment will destroy you. I'm not saying you have to be happy all the time. Nope, I'm not saying you have to be high vibrational all the time. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying live in the anticipation that amazing things are going to happen. Live in the anticipation that everything is going to work out. Live in the anticipation that good things are coming. Reflect back what you see, but always keep that anticipation for good things in the forefront of your mind. And you will experience that. All you have to do is be and reflect and talk about what you see, what you feel, what you, what you know is going to happen next. And then detach. Detach from it and anticipate amazing things happening. Okay, so that is it for Reflectors. I hope this video was helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching. And I will see you in the next one.